welcome to Kit Guru. You're here with me, Christina, and today we are looking at the ROG Gladius 3 wireless gaming mouse coming in at $99.99. Will the Gladius 3 be able to battle its way to a great review, or will it seem a little bit dull? Well, that's what we're here to find out. It's that time that I must ask you to hit that sub and like button if you haven't already. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> now, inside the box, we have the Gladius 3 itself, of course, followed by the detachable USB-C to USB-A shoelace cable, the USB A to USB C adapter, the spare five pin Omron switches, which we will go into later. There are also spare glide pads and also the usual paraphernalia. Looks wise, at first glance, we can see some very similar Asus ROG design with the logo at the back and that satin plastic shell. But as we move to the right side, and there is some serious flair here appearing as the high hump tailors in and swoops down to accommodate a right hand. There is also some really interesting grips on the side as they are different on each side. On the left, we have a wide and inconsistent pattern with the ROG Gladius engraved into the plastic, which looks great with the RGB coming through it. On the right, hand side we have a tight pinstripe engraved design. This looks rather funky but I did find it a little odd as usually a tighter engraving design offers a little more grip and I usually find that it's my thumb that slips off not so much my fingers but we'll see how this feels later on. I personally think that it would have been nice to have some texture on the left and right click as although they are contoured it's just kind of smooth plastic with that satin finish that I mentioned earlier. I also find that the finish is a little bit slippy and it does attract grease if you're sweaty or you've just eaten etc. I have to mention the cable by the way that Asus call it the ROG Paracord and say that it's two times softer than the previous version and lightweight. That I can agree with but it's also really thin. like really thin. It makes it really easy to kink and although you can pull them out relatively easy, it never really goes back exactly to what it was before and I imagine over months of use it could end up all sorts of shapes really. But to the mouse itself, the mouse wheel has really nice and prominent increments and the rubber is very good for grip with this angled pinstripe design running around it. And just in from there is a similar etch design in plastic. Also on the front of the mouse you have this stippled effect plastic too and here you can also see the USB-C connection. There is also a really small triangular gloss DPI button. I like this actually and I know you might be thinking crikey that is really small but it does actually prevent you from accidentally pressing it. You really have to make a deliberate effort to do it and the triangular shape means that when you are scrolling vigorously you won't be able to engage it by accident very easily. Underneath we have quite a lot going on here. First off the basics with the five 100% Teflon glide pads, the usual information, but we also have lots of switches and buttons. At the very top we have the connection mode where you can choose between 2.4 gigahertz wireless, wired or Bluetooth. Next we have the pairing button which you can use when connecting your Bluetooth mode for the first time. By setting the switch above to Bluetooth first, then pressing and holding the pair buttons for three seconds until the LED on the mouse starts blinking blue. Once it has paired the LED will light up blue for three seconds and you can also pair the Gladius 3 to up to three other devices and switch between them by pressing the pairing button to switch between them too. There is an LED indicator to show you which device you are connected to as well. So red is default or one and two is purple, three is blue. I really like this feature as it means you don't have to repair all the time and especially if you have multiple systems or devices to move to and from for editing, let's say for example, it makes your workflow a lot quicker. So this also makes the Gladius 3 a great workhorse too. The next button on here as we move down is the profile button. You can switch between five different profiles here which can be customized in the software, which we will look at shortly. Then of course we have the wireless dongle. This is magnetized too, so no chance of it accidentally falling out, which I like and it's recessed into a nice gloss plastic edging. We also have the removable rubber screw caps either side as well, but before we dive into opening this bad boy up, I wanted to talk to you about the one thing we have left behind that we can see underneath here, and that is the sensor. That is a PAW3370 sensor with a 19,000 DPI, but with software it's tuned up to 26,000. So I thought I would do a liftoff distance test and on low liftoff distance selected in the software, the sensor doesn't read on one disc height. On high, it barely reads on one disc height. So <laughs> a very low liftoff distance here. So okay, there is a lot going on here visually, but what about feel? 
Well, that flare to the right hand side definitely provides a lot of stabilization and gives you the opportunity in all grips to have your pinky down or up off of the mouse mat. Acer state that the asymmetrical design is well suited to a variety of grip styles and I would agree. There is ample room for full palm. The right hand side grip really helps with stability for claw grip and fingertip grip. And I still feel that the left hand side grip is slightly slippier than the right, but to be honest, I didn't notice any slippage in use. The left and right click provide no pre-travel, which is most likely down to the pivoted button mechanism that Asus use, which balances the keys to minimize the gap between the buttons and the switches. But there is quite a bit of post-travel. The click they provide is very tactile, but I feel that depending on where you click on the mouse button, depends on how heavy that actuation actually feels. If you click near the base, you get quite a heavy click, whereas at the end, there is a softer, lighter actuation. This may be just a placebo but it definitely feels different with different grips. The side buttons are really nice though, which I am relieved to say as some companies do kind of skimp out here, but not Asus. The side buttons have a really nice satisfying click and this also goes for that DPI button. The side buttons are rather heavy and in my use I had no accidental presses when gaming for instance as I sometimes do with my own Basilisk version 2 by Razer. Here is a sound test for you. Build quality wise, there is no give when pressing the sides, but there is a slight give when pressing the top. You can hear the switches inside slightly engage, which is a little bit disappointing, but nothing that I think you could do in general use. In gaming, I instantly gelled with this mouse and it was so easy to switch from my daily driver to this one without any kind of mental recalibration. There was no jittering and the whole experience had no lag or any other inconveniences. And I really found this mouse comfortable after long periods of use. In terms of battery, I I found that over a few days of normal use with the RGB on and DPI about 1600, I got down to around 55%. Asus claimed that the battery life is around 55 hours without RGB on and wireless, 85 hours without RGB on Bluetooth and with RGB on on wireless 31 hours and with RGB on Bluetooth 42 hours. So let's talk about software. First, make sure your software, which is the Asus Armoury Crate, is up to date, and then select the Gladius 3, if you have other Asus products, of course. Then you will end up here. This is where you can change the functionality of the buttons and their actions if you wish by selecting a button and choosing what you would like to reprogram it to. Next, we have the performance tab and here you can change your four onboard DPI profiles using the sliders. And currently it does display 26,000 DPI as a maximum and as mentioned earlier the sensor is a PAW3370 inside the max DPI is 19,000 but due to the software it is what Asus call ROG tuned up to 26,000 DPI. You can also change the polling rate with a maximum of 1000 Hertz and you also have button responses options and angle snapping here. Next on the lighting tab you can change between the six preset LED brightness and speed and just to mention it does come at 50% brightness and it gives you a warning when you first change it to 100% to say your battery will run out quicker at 100%, which I thought was quite handy. You can also go to Aura Creator if you wish and make your own designs, but with the free RGB zones, it's not really necessary. Next, we have the calibration screen. Here, you can calibrate your surface by selecting a preset, or you can manually calibrate if not at the bottom of the page. Here, you can also change the liftoff distance as mentioned earlier. And in the power tab, you can see the battery percentage and you can change at what percentage you will get a warning by a flashing red LED. And underneath, you can set when the mouse goes into sleep mode. I did find that the default of three minutes is a little short so I suggest maybe upping that personally but if it does go into sleep you can wake it up just by using it so there's no need to turn it off and on again or anything like that. Obviously the end tab is where you find the updates and in the top right we have the profile drop down where you can change the settings of the five profiles and switch between them either from here or on the fly underneath the mouse. Also you may have noticed there is three dots with an N next to it. This is the extra options where you can export, duplicate profiles and settings, etc. But interestingly, there is a create new rapid fire profile. 
If you click this, you can create a new profile, but not just any old profile. You can see before I change the profile, the buttons tab looks normal with the usual descriptions. However, if I change the profile, you can see that when I hover over the left and scroll and right clicks, they are greyed out and they say reserved exclusively for rapid fire. So you must assign one of these side buttons as an activator button, and this can be set as shift mode, which is hold to activate whilst pressing the free rapid fire buttons, or toggle, which toggles between normal and rapid fire modes. By default, the rapid fire is set to 50 milliseconds, but if we click the little icon down in the left-hand side, you can see that they turn on and you can change how many milliseconds you want it to engage for a precise delay time. I just wanted to talk about opening up the Gladius 3, it was relatively easy in the fact that you take the rubber bungs out and unscrew the two screws underneath and the base will come away from the shell. Also, I took this opportunity to change out the three pin ROG optical switches, which come with the device for the five pin Omron's D2FPFN. And to be honest, they don't feel that much different. Okay, maybe the Omron's are slightly lighter in actuation. They sound a bit different when you click them, but here is a sound test for you with the ROGs first in both buttons and the Omron's after. So as you can tell, the replaceable Omrons really don't sound that great with a lot of echoiness and a hollow sound. So for me, I would stick with the included ROG switches because of this. We can also see that the side buttons have kill switches too. Now in comparison to the Gladius 2, there are some aesthetic differences such as the ergonomics of the Gladius 2 compared to the 3. It has an elongated design on the left and right click buttons and this allows for the slope to continue on for longer. It's not as drastic as a drop off as the 3. I I would say the shape is quite different under the hand and the Gladys 2 feels a little bit lower in the hump and lower in general in comparison to the 3. The DPI button is slightly different too and I found that the new DPI on the 3 is much harder to accidentally engage which is a big bonus especially in FPS games etc. The weight is also massively reduced from 124 grams to 89 grams. There are some detail changes too so the side grips are rubber on the old ones and they've been replaced by plastic on the 3 and the mouse wheel is slightly different too. The base is very much the same except the dongle is not in the device but completely separate and there is no profile select button on the two either. So spec wise the main differences include that we now have a USB-C charging port on the three instead of a micro USB on the two. Also the sensor in the original Gladius 2 is a PMW3389. This has a maximum DPI of 16,000, whereas the new Gladius 3 has the PAW3370 with a max native DPI of 19,000 and up to 26,000 via software. Main switch wise, the two came with the Omrons and the spare Japanese made Omrons. The three has the ROG micro switches and is compatible with three or five pin optical micro switches. I would say in comparison, the click on the two is slightly duller than that of the three and there is a lot less pre and post travel on the three, I feel. Here is a sound test for both together. conclusion this is a fantastic example of a gaming mouse at this price point and the fact that you can connect it up to multiple devices simultaneously is great for content creators too which gives this mouse usability in everyday life as well as gaming. This is also bolstered by the fact that it's pretty darn comfortable to use too. It's a good option if you want an ergonomic mouse especially with the swappable switches but if you're happy with a symmetrical shape the Razer Viper Ultimate is currently on sale for $107.99 currently on Amazon which is another great mouse choice at this price point. And if you want to see the dedicated review for this, you can also catch that here on KitGuru. So what do you think of the ROG Gladius 3? Did you have the Gladius 2? Let us know down in the comments and whilst you're there, make sure to hit those like and sub buttons and check out our website daily for tech news. My name's Christina, this is KitGuru, I'll see you in the next one.